Good morning. Welcome this morning. This is Thursday morning, June 3rd, and we welcome you to today's edition of Glimpses of Grace and Glory. Today we're going to talk about a magnificent story, which I think will be an encouragement to all of us as the body of Christ to stand together. This story is found in Exodus chapter 17. I think we all know the story of the Exodus when God used Moses to lead the children of Israel out of slavery and bondage in the land of Egypt. And he performed miraculous signs against the 10 gods of Egypt. And finally they exited. We know they had been wandering and God directed them to leave the wilderness of sin, that is Sinai. And they journeyed around and came to Rephidim. And when they got there, the people murmured against Moses because they had no water. Well, that sounds like a legitimate complaint had it not been for all the miracles they had seen and how God had led them with a pillar of fire and a pillar of cloud and spared the firstborn and opened the Red Sea, they should have been encouraged to know that if God was leading them, he would take care of them. But they complained and they said, you know, you've brought us out here. Did you bring us and our children and our cattle out here to kill us with thirst out here in this wilderness? And God went to, or Moses went to God and said, Lord, what am I going to do with these people? And the Lord said, just go out before the people, take the elders with you, take the staff that I gave you and smite the rock and water will come out for the people. Well, you know that that was representative of Jesus being smitten, Jesus the rock being smitten and water came out of his side and, and the people who were dying when they partake of the Holy Spirit coming from Jesus uh, they live and that was a representative but the people drank and they had plenty to drink well their murmuring planning didn't cause anything good of course and the Amalekites decided to attack them so Amalek came against them and Moses told Joshua he said gather together an army and go out and fight with the Amalekites and he said I will take Aaron and her and I'll stand up on the hill and I'll hold up the staff of God so to be an encouragement to the people well, he got up there and he would raise the staff up and he held the staff up with his arms and Israel real would prevail. But his arms got so tired, he said, I just cannot keep my arms up and his arms would fall down. And so Aaron was on one side and Hur was on the other side and they put a rock there and they said, Moses, sit down. So they set him down on the rock and Aaron grabbed one arm and Hur grabbed one arm and they held Moses' arms up because he was so tired from holding him up, he couldn't hold him up any longer. And they held his arms up and Israel prevailed until the close of the day and won the battle. But well, what's the moral behind this story? What was God trying to teach us? You know, there are brothers and sisters who are going through hard times and they just can't hold up their hands in prayer anymore. Some people say, I, I was so weak, I was so distressed, I couldn't even pray. Well, that happens to people. You know, they get what's called battle fatigue. They've, they've been in this spiritual battle, they've been going through this trial, and they just get so tired and so weary that they feel like they can't go on. We say, well, the Lord will strengthen them, I'll pray for them. That is true, but you know, the body of Christ needs to do more than just pray. You know, if, if I can't, uh, can't pick up something with, with one hand, I use two hands. So my brain tells my body, get the rest of your body into it. You know, get your legs into it. Get both hands into it and lift. Well, Jesus, the head, is telling the body, look, this brother or this sister is going through a hard time. Come alongside. Don't just pray. Get there. Encourage. Sing hymns with them. Bring scriptures to them. Be beside them. Put your arm around them. They're hungry. They're going through a financial battle. Give them some money because I blessed you. Give them this amount and it might be more than, oh, I didn't want to give that much. Give what God tells you to give. He might tell you, go help this person. They're in bed. Go do their laundry. Go provide food for them. Go cook for them. Maybe wash their dishes. They can't do it by themselves. They need help. You need to, we need to come alongside just as Aaron and her did. They lifted up Moses' arms. They put him down on a rock so he could have something to sit on and be comfortable. The man is very tired. He was probably a bit older at this point. So they sat him down and said, relax, Moses. You're tired. You can't do it anymore. We've got your arms. We know they're so tired and so weary, you can't hold them up anymore. That's what we should do as a body of Christ. We should have that kind of care that our, all our brothers and sisters were there for him. And maybe it's not even a brother and sister. Maybe it's an unsaved neighbor. 
and showing forth that love of God to them to say, I'm here for you, to see them in need and go help them, to rush in to help somebody. Maybe it's a car on the side of the road and God directs you to help that person. They have a flat tire. They're broken down. Stop and ask if you can help them and show them the love of Christ. More than the words, the act of love that Jesus would show forth, you show forth. And it will probably lead into words. But if it doesn't, still show forth the love. But I'm sure they're going to wonder what's going on. And when they say, thank you so much, they will thank the Lord. Jesus Christ directed me to do this for you because he loves you. And that's what God wants us to do, particularly in the body of Christ, to hold each other up, not only in prayer, but to go physically and actually help a person with what they need. And Lord, help us to see as a body of Christ, you intend for us to stand together, to uphold each other. There are people who are so tired. They've been going through such long battles. They may be going through spiritual battles. They're tempted to give up. They're tempted to say, well, I'm not really saved. Or they're tempted to say, this sickness I cannot overcome. I'm so weak, I can't pray. My family situation, my child who's on drugs, or my alcoholic uh, relative, or whatever it might be, the battle has worn them down. Help us not just to be on the sidelines watching like we're spectators, but to get in there, to put our arms around them, to uphold them and say, we're praying with you, but we're also here for you. What can I do for you? Use us to that capacity, Lord, so that you'll be glorified and your love will show forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.